What's up everybody and welcome back to Let's Play FTL. In the last episode, I honestly have no idea what we're doing because it's been a while. But in this episode, we have a race slash challenge slash whatever the hell it is. Uh, battle video with our pack patrol who is here right now. Why don't you say hello? Hey! What's going on? Yeah, we're here and uh, to explain before we get too far into the video, first off, if you want to see the first part of this race battle challenge thing, click on the annotation that will be on the screen right about now or follow the link in the description. We got show links. You want links? We got links inside your links. We got inception links and I got dogs barking. We got everything. Yo dog, I heard you like links. We put links inside your links so that you can link while you're linking. Perfect. Um, second thing is that Unfortunately, this is post-commentary, and I know you're like, well, what have I do? Well, we have post-commentary because what happened is Fraps is a douchebag, and we're going to end it there. No, I'll explain it to you. Fraps, basically, what happened uh, was it delayed my microphone audio, or it slowly, slowly but surely became out of sync with the video itself, and normally you'd think, you know, you could just move the audio back and line it up with the video, but the game audio wasn't out of sync, just my microphone audio, so basically... Me and Alpaca would be having a conversation. We'd be talking. To, we'd be talking over each other and not responding to each other in time. It sounds. It basically is unwatchable. Um, so that's why instead of going and recording an entire new video, and because Alpaca, you know, I'm not going to spoil anything. Actually, never mind. Um, <laughs> in order to make things easier, we're just going to do post commentary. And also, we've, I've mentioned before. Uh, we both mentioned before that we've always kind of wanted to do a podcast kind of thing. So this would be a good test to see how interesting we can be while <laughs> nothing's happening. So, exactly. that is what we're going to do, and I remember being very angry at this part in the video because the first ship I fought had a uh, boarding drone, which I was unhappy with. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Yeah, I mean, but this ship is kind of wrecking my day because it's like throwing missiles at me non-stop. And I think it's, I think it's an Artemis, too, because I think it's doing two damage, right? Let me oh, see. Oh, well, good. No, it's, it's a lead-up. But, I mean, like, early game, every, every freaking... Uh, system you have only has one health anyway so right right yeah, it is uh it's gonna be interesting though because we both know how this go how this turns out so we're gonna we're gonna try not to spoil it um but we might fail some part <laughs> once we're right because uh, the video is like an hour and a, an hour and 20 minutes long so once we get like 30 minutes into the video it'll probably slip but anyway uh well what, what, what do you want to talk about since we have some time to talk about stuff uh how about life love Love and Latin, not specifically Psychic. in that order. Uh, yeah, let's let's talk about making love to things that are alive. I mean, making love to things that are dead too. I guess you know. Whatever I wouldn't go with it. I mean, that's a bit controversial. I, it's, it's hey, you know, it's some it, it, everybody has different preferences for things. Well, I'm not denying uh, that, but some preferences are best left as preferences. And that's not. a good point. However, <laughs> I mean. I'm not using my body. If somebody wants to fuck my body after I'm dead, I mean, I could easily just say, like, hey, I I was so good at getting laid that I could get laid while I'm dead. <laughs> uh, so I, that's, I, I think, honestly, that would be impressive to add, just even add to my legacy, really. Yeah, yeah. And be like, this guy, this guy was so good at doing it, he's still doing it now. That's very true. That is very true. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, but what, what, it took, like, two minutes into the video, three minutes to start talking about having sex with dead people. Yeah, well, that's that, what happens when you post I'll, I'll, I'll clock that one. Um, I'll write <laughs> that one down. Uh, that's what happens. I mean, it wouldn't be unlike Halo. By the way, speaking of Halo, have you seen... Did you see that one uh, GIF that they had of, uh, the of Halo? Where, yes. Yes, I did. And that's I, pretty cool. I'm not a, I don't like Halo, really. I'm, I'm actually, see, I used to be an adamant hater of Halo. That's but, interesting, uh, because Halo's yeah. probably the least of the offensive console games sure. out there in terms of history. But, like, before Call of Duty, it was all Halo all the time. With, with right. See, that, that, contrary to you, I'm actually a big Halo fan, and I have been since Halo no, I mean, 2. I mean, I don't, I don't hate it now, because I, 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 it largely, you know, a lot of things that you hate are things that you don't understand, you know? Yeah, and I, I yeah. Didn't really, I didn't really play Halo that much. Uh, but, I, but I played the third game, and it's, it's a really well-made really well game. The, you know, the campaign is not. especially good. I mean, f uh, first-person shooter campaigns are usually lacking. Yeah, uh, yeah. But the Halo campaign is probably the best first-person shooter uh, campaign. Solar Flare. I just walked into a Solar Flare. Um, I kind of vaguely remember this being a piece of shit. Uh, <laughs> I, I do remember the entire like first half of your video going very poorly as well. Yeah, yeah. It, it gets rough here. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, no. The, yeah, the, the the campaign is 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 fantastic. It uh, is. I mean, it's a great story. It's it's 
it's really it's really fun too. I mean, it, you'd think shooting things over and over would get old, like it usually does in most first-person shooter campaigns, but it, it's uh, it's relatively uh, fun. Yeah, no, definitely. It I mean, it, 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 it kind of sparked that that uh, that era of like, oh, this guy's a grizzled space marine. No, this guy's a grizzled <laughs> space marine, which was so boring. But you know, right, right. It was. Uh, I mean, it's the fault of being good. Yeah, which is never. I guess oh, this guy. <laughs> on the subject of Halo, Halo Four does come out in about a month. Actually, I think November sixth is the day, but I wouldn't. Oh, does it? Be a hundred percent. Uh, yeah, and, you know, I don't know how to feel about it, because the campaign was supposed to end at 3. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, I mean, that w- that's that's just Microsoft being like, hey, hey we could still make money off of Halo. Yeah, well, that that was also Halo Reach, Halo Wars, Halo DST, right, right. Halo this, Halo... Once they well, started going Bungie off the numbers... But Bungie stuck around for a lot of that, and then, they, and then eventually they were just like, okay... We can't, we can't we hurt. We've <laughs> this now. I have such low health right now. I've just gotten into some, like, serious troubles. Yeah. But uh but the the so far the campaign footage that I've seen from Halo 4 looks very very interesting. And uh I I definitely am going to play it because like I said I wasn't a big Halo fan. Got to got to follow the story at least. Um, I'm not going to be I'm not going to be one of those guys who goes out and buys it day 1 or just maybe even buys it. Maybe I'll watch a let's play of it though. You see, now I've never seen a let's play of really any console Xbox 360 game before. Um, you know, I watched uh, one thing that I watched that was a that was a console let's play was uh, Northern Lions Dark Souls let's play. Ah, because I never got a chance to play that game. Now it did come out on the PC, but I still haven't had a chance to play it. But and that game's pretty cool, man. It is a very cool game. Um, yeah, mo- uh, the, the big problem with the Xbox 360 is that it's really there's no good campaign games out there for. It's mostly multiplayer, really. Is the big yeah, deal. yeah. I mean. Uh, I, well, that's that. That is kind of an allegory for just mainstream gaming in general. Right, right. It, is that it's just gotten so boring. I mean, I look up at my collection of Xbox games, and I, I see, like, my, the vast majority multiplayer focused games: Call of Duty, Battlefield, right. Halo. Uh, but again, Halo is probably the only exception where it's not all focused on the multiplayer. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the only, the only like Xbox games that I ever really turn on my Xbox to play nowadays is like Madden and I barely do that now too because they kind of screwed up my freaking Madden game this year. Yeah, you're not happy about that. I'm very not happy about that. Although I'm sure no one who watches this are are, are like Madden fans. Yeah, Mad- so Madden's the same in Call of Duty as it's one of those series you try to stray away from. <laughs> it is. It's uh, it's a shitteration series. Yeah. It's it just, is a uh, shit out of game every year series. Yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, it, uh, you know, it, 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 it's just that uh, I don't want to talk too much about sports games, but yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, sports games have the potential to be lots of fun. Uh, they really do because I mean they're basically RPGs. You know, when when you're when you're running a team, you're playing an RPG. Actually, Todd Howard, the uh, creator of the well, not the creator, but the um, basically the lead designer on all the Elder Scrolls games since uh, since Morrowind, uh, he said that that like one of his favorite RPGs is NCAA football every year because instead of leveling one character, I level like you know fifteen or something or right. well not fifteen fifty five. <laughs> Shows how much I know about football. Exactly. Uh, but uh, yeah, no. I, so I mean. It, it has the potential to be cool. There's a lot of stuff that you can do. I mean, like, imagine the kind of random events that are in FTL, say, um, where it's just like, oh, this player uh, beat the shit out of his wife. Now you're going to have to play without this wide receiver for a few games. You know, like, like stuff like that. It's just, like, like just make stories up that, that are fun. Or that, well, not, that, not, <laughs> it's not particularly fun. When That's it, not uh, a terribly uh, fun story, no. Yeah, I mean, it's not great, but, it, but I mean, it happens. But... You know, the, a lot of the issue, though, is in part because of the NFL, and, and a lot of the issue with with sports games in general, um, or at least Madden in general, is that uh, is that the NFL is is that kind of uh, is that kind of brand where they decide like, oh, it's one brand for one thing. So like, there's the official beer of the NFL, there's the official camera of the NFL. Pretty sure every American beer is the official beer of the NFL. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, no, no, it's it's actually, it's always only one, it's always only one beer. Uh, right, which right. I, I don't know what it is right now, but, I, I mean, that it's, changes. Uh, yeah, it's either Miller or Bud, it's always either one of the two. Yeah, so, but the issue with that is that they decided that, you know, EA is the official game company of, yeah. of, of the NFL, which means that there's no kind of competition and therefore no evasion. I mean, not evasion, uh, innovation. Playing too much, uh, video and video. <laughs> God, was my evasion three? Okay, yeah. Um, I actually have never ever played a sports game before, to be completely honest. Like, not even in like a GameStop or at a friend's house. Really? Yeah, I'd, like any sports game altogether. Uh, no, I think I vaguely remember playing some baseball game on the PlayStation Two years and years ago. There um, actually is a really good uh, baseball game. I just hate baseball, but there's man. a really good baseball game on the uh, on the PS3 called. Uh, uh, gosh, what's it called? I don't know, but it's really good. Uh, the show, that's it. Ah, uh, I've heard of that one. It's very, very good. It's 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 extremely well made, but um, you know, it, it uh, sports games again. You know, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of good things that you could do with it. Oh, and, and I didn't finish my point actually. Uh, so because of this, because of it, it's the one brand thing, and because the NFL cares about its integrity. <laughs> uh, you can't make those kind of stories in the game. You can't. You can't like randomly make some player whose name you're actually using like beat the shit out of his wife or something, or or like you know hurt a guy too bad or or something and get suspended by Roger Goodell. Because then, because then the player is just gonna be like, well, I'm gonna sue you for defamation of character. And uh, <laughs> it works. That's why it's, it, it's kind of shaky territory, uh, sports games, because you're very limited by by the brand. You know. Yeah. Yeah. See if if you had suspensions and. Uh, Madden, probably the entire Steelers team would be suspended every, uh, you yeah. wouldn't get to play that team. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, you can't really have a, uh, <laughs> like, the way you could do it is, like, there's a higher chance depending on, say, like, your discipline rating or something, right? Yeah. But, I mean, then players would probably get pretty pissed off if they got, like, a <laughs> like three discipline rating, like Randy Moss would get, like, a like a ten discipl- discipline rating. San Antonio then, Holmes would be there, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then then they would sue. So, yeah. but you know, when you're making millions of dollars, you, you know, playing a game, you really don't need to complain about those kind of things. True, very true. I mean, they are literally just playing a game for money. Yeah, they, yeah that's something that I always like to reiterate whenever uh, I'm talking about like sports in general. Is that uh, they're they're literally making millions of dollars for throwing and catching a ball. They're playing catch. They're playing catch. For a living, a very complicated physical game of catch, but yeah, essentially. It's, it's true, but I mean, you know, the, fundamentally, it's they're playing catch. Exactly, but it's a very fun game of catch to watch for sure. It is, it is, it definitely is. I will but say that. I think we should we should venture off of football because, surprisingly, yeah. a lot of uh, our subscribers are for I, I say foreign, but foreign to us, but uh, from Europe and other countries, and they're not really into football. <laughs> That's a good point. That is a good point. Uh, they're yeah. into football, as uh, I can mispronounce that in a horrible, uh, very stereotypical uh, I mean, Hispanic it's, accent. It still translates to football, so I mean... I guess. <laughs> but I, <laughs> I always, whenever, whenever we t- uh, talk about soccer, soccer, as we like to call it in our dumb American nation, I should stop. <laughs> why, why we do call it soccer, I don't know. I don't know. It's the same reason why we call pineapples pineapples. Did you see that Reddit article? We're like the just, only yeah. nation in the world to call pineapples pineapples. Yeah, what do they call in other countries? Like, like yeah, uh, uh, yeah, booyah, baba. So, I don't know a bunch of A's is what I remember. Uh, oh, I'm yeah. sure someone in the comments will fill us in. Oh, I got a new sub- sub- not subscriber. A uh, new uh, dude on my ship. New crew member. I remember uh, at this point, I think I just start like stacking crew members. Yeah, it's, I, I have my five NGs of it by now, which uh, was definitely stacking up. And I was looking pretty good right now. Hole laser, ion blast. Uh, any ship drone, defense drone, oh no, hull repair drone. I, mm, I'm just gonna say this now because people are gonna get mad at me when it happens in the video. I do sell the hull repair drone, but I had a completely legitimate reason to do so. I it was a bad reason. I, I actually tried to warn you, and I was. Hey, again. I never really needed the repair drone after, and it never really. It wasn't the reason I died in the end. The reason I well. Yeah, no, it's definitely not the reason that you uh, that you died in the end. I, I guess yeah. that's spoiled. None of neither of us beat the boss, so. Yeah, 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 that's not really much of a spoiler. Yeah, because that really happens. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I mean, uh, hull repair drone can be make or break 
it could be. But uh, when you have really good offense, uh, it works kind of as a defense when you can take out systems, especially weapons. True. Very true. Yeah, I mean, I recently had a run I told you about that uh, that I just had a bunch of, like, missiles and stuff. and that was Yeah, like, I watched that. You had a foop toop ton of missiles. Yeah, I, I well, because after, because I, I basically I didn't use missiles the whole game, and then I got missiles, like, at the end, and then uh, by then I kind of just just stacked a bunch of missiles, like, any kind of, uh, like, chance I had at, like, uh, any chance I had at uh, at picking up missiles, I just take it, and uh, like like I'd say like screw the scrap, mm -hmm. take missiles. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I I will have a bunch by the end. Or uh -oh. I did have a bunch by the end. Sorry. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was like, wait, are we what, what are we talking about now? Because yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I had a buttload. You you do collect a lot of missiles as the NG cruiser though, because you don't have something to start off as uh, for right, missiles. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, oh, here I'm fighting the uh, the genius uh, rebel rigger here, who has two beam weapons, a beam drone and a beam laser. And I don't know where this guy got his uh, captain's license, but he's doing it wrong. Can't, can't pierce shields with two lasers. That's true. That's very true. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely not going to make that trade. <laughs> One fuel for five missiles. Wait, five really? Missiles, man? Yeah. One but I mean, fuel. I don't missiles, so... Yeah, but that could help you in the end. I mean, nah. one fuel for five missiles? If you get into a station that sells missiles, that's basically like 15 scrap, I think. Or more than that, yeah. even. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, you know, that's... That, that like, I, I don't know, relying on randomness, whereas having the extra scrap... I, I, I like sure things. That's why I'm a good poker player. It's because I never really bet on anything that isn't a sure thing. I've I'm a terrible poker player because uh, while I am extremely lucky in Isaac, which is very apparent if you watch any of my Isaac videos, I'm quite lucky. Um, I am just terribly unlucky when it comes to poker. Just yeah, see, well that's the thing about uh, about poker that a lot of people who don't play poker don't understand is uh, not really very much based on luck. You know, you say that, but uh, when your hands are like 2-7 every other... Uh, Time round, yeah, the luck plays a factor there. <laughs> I mean, two seven can kind of screw your day up, but I mean, still, I the um, two seven is probably my most frequent hand. <laughs> the uh, the the Doyle Brunson hand is uh, is ten deuce, right? So I mean, he he famously won two world championships uh, with deuce, with ten deuce. Uh, so you know, hey, you can you can win with any hand in poker. I uh, know. I explained to uh, I think I said this in one of my more recent Isaac videos how. We always play family poker when we're, 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 we're like at a family gathering or something, and how my grandmother always wins. Uh, she's, she's not. A, she's not even good at poker. As, as a kind, kind old lady, and she, really no, she is. She, she like. She sometimes is like, should I? Oh, should I fold? Like that kind of poker player. Um, oh, it's. It's just misinformation. I guess it, I know. No, yeah. As you say that now, it does sound uh, kind of fishy, but. <laughs> <laughs> but what happened was... I have such a terrible hand! I guess I'll <laughs> fold! Oh, you raised me a hundred dollars, sweetie? All right, I guess I'll call. <laughs> you deserve the money. Oh, wait, I had a royal flush? I, I didn't even see that. <laughs> but no, speaking of ridiculously lucky hands, she got four of a kind twice in three turns. Huh? Well, it happens like that sometimes. Sometimes you do I mean, get that... You do realize, I mean, you, you play poker, four of a kind never happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I'm, I'm assuming you're, you're meaning Hold'em too, right? Uh, yeah, Texas Hold'em. Right. And yeah, uh, no, that, that's, that's pretty rare. That, and then two in uh, three goes is, uh, oof, people were a little bit angry. And it, oh, I think the first time uh, she got the four of a kind, I had a full house. And that made oh, me really? sad face. <laughs> Because yeah. I was like, oh, I'm going to win this one. I mean, full house. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. full house. I can, you better have, like, seven aces because this is, this is the hand right here. She had four <laughs> tens. Oh, yeah, she, the, both well, times it was tens, too. You know, once, and I, uh, and I got, uh, I got, like, trip aces cracked. Oh, it felt bad, man. <laughs> it's bad. I, I cannot wait till bad. I can go play Hold'em. The, the thing I've heard the most about Vegas is never, ever play the slots. So I'm never going to play the slots. Oh uh, no no no! You never, never play the slots. I mean, that's that's gambling. That, when you play poker, you're not gambling. See, that's the thing about poker is that it's it's a skill game. It's not really a uh, 
It's yeah. not. It's not really based on luck. It is. There is a luck is a factor, but right, right. It, it, luck's a factor in any game, really. It's just kind of a well balanced game. Mm -hmm. Indeed. But, uh, but yeah, and, and in fairness, the casino that I went to was in like somewhere in like Bumpuck Nowhere, Florida. So, you uh, know, it, like I, I'm not I'm not going to Vegas and and winning. And I I went with uh, 120 dollars. Uh, I got down to like 20, and then uh, and then I won all my money back. Oh, well, that I, that's I good. Actually, made 20 bucks, and then I was just like, well, I'm cashing out. Yep, see ya. I, Oh. <laughs> it's bad etiquette to not, you know, play your money back in, but uh, I don't care. Yeah, of all the fucking things that are legal in Texas, though, you'd think gambling would be legal, but it's not. Are there yeah. other things legal in Texas? Uh, Texas, well, I mean, it's, I don't know. It, it's just uh, one of those oh, southern states. This? Do what now? You kind of lag there. Uh, execution, I know. Oh, oh yeah, death yeah, penalty, yeah, that's one of them. Yeah, but, uh, but yeah, you have to uh, drive to Louisiana to gamble. Can there there are no casinos at all in Texas. Have you ever been to New Orleans? I always wanted to go. I you know I was born in Baton Rouge, but I uh, I never I've never been to New Orleans. Because uh, I, I only I only lived in Baton Rouge for like a year. Oh okay. Yeah no uh, I've I've always wanted to go. Uh, New Orleans seems like a cool place, man. You could like drink on the streets and like. Like cool. I, I feel like I've been talking about like like poker and like. <laughs> You're now. a terrible person. <laughs> like, I'm, make, I'm making myself sound like some like old gangster or something. <laughs> like, back in my day, poker was what men played while I sit with, like, a like a cup of whiskey or something. Yeah, you definitely have to have that slightly full cup of whiskey to pull off that picture. But, I wish uh, I a cup of whiskey. Oh, I think right now I'm fighting, uh... Yeah, I'm fighting the ship with no weapons. So, like, they had a, uh... Literally? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, so there was this, like, Zoltan ship, and they asked, like, hey, spare us and we'll give you some stuff. And I was like, no, nope, fuck you, I'm killing you. And then they didn't have any shields or weapons, and I was like, mm, I feel kind of bad. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember, I've never seen that. I've never seen a ship without shields or weapons. Yeah, I never saw that random event, which is why, like, I thought I had seen it before, and I was like, yeah, I'm just going to kill him. And and then I was just like, oh, I feel kind of bad about doing this now. Now, I wonder what you would have gotten if you, uh, if you didn't kill him. Uh, yeah, I wonder. I mean, I, I tried to deal with it because I, I, uh, I uh, whatchamacallit, after after they had like two hole left, it gives you the uh, random option to, like, you know, not finish them off. So I did that, and then they just didn't give me anything. So I was just like, well, I should. Well, you did shoot the shit out of them, so I would be I wouldn't be really giving anything to anyone. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. I mean, they probably need any money that they have to repair now, because I was just a dick and rolled through and was like, I'm the Federation, bitch. <laughs> but, uh, uh. But, uh, yeah, I mean. Uh, yeah. Oh, I think I just sold my... No, 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 I didn't sell it yet. I will sell it soon, though. <laughs> people, cool. If you do something controversial, people will be all over your ass. Oh, yes, they will. Believe me, I know that well. Yeah. <laughs> I showed you that comment that I got recently. Yeah, that one That one gave me a laugh. Yeah, <laughs> it's a douchebag. He's, like, really douchey, too. Like, have fun having your low subscriber base forever, because <laughs> you're just a douchebag. And it's like, oh, somebody's mad uh, is insignificant. If only he knew, and I would say nothing more. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, again, that's that's still under wraps. Yep, I know. That's why I vaguely vagued about it. I vagued all over that subject. You vagued the shit out of that. <laughs> uh, like, up hard, man. Yeah. Oh, good. And Artemis on my captain's whatever. You know, intruders when you only have NG crew are hard. pretty bad. Yeah, but I mean, we have a lot. I mean, you can just invent the whole thing and then. Well, I would say go to med bay, but my med bay just got taken out, so <laughs> maybe that's not a good idea. Maybe the, it's trying to show me Never something. go to the med bay. Only Never go to the med bay. I feel <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> like doing the uh, overly manly man meme. Oh, I saw a couple of those. That's a, that's a funny meme. Yeah, they're pretty funny. <laughs> it's, it's just one where it's just like... Uh, Boxing gloves? Do you put yeah. those next to your women towels or something like that? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, the, the women towel. Yep, that's it. That is that. This is the best I can come up with. I mean, you are, you are meme master. I want to say. Me? Oh yeah. man, you that needs to be a meme in itself. Meme master. You should. Yeah, meme. Ma <laughs> I'll just take a picture of myself. Put that one up there. Meme master. Uh, the mean meme master. I can go. I can do this all day. Shitty, jo <laughs> shitty jokes. I got all the shitty jokes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um. But uh, I'm sure you're good, good in smack talk before a fight. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, I bet you, uh, 
Uh, by the way, actually, side note, I want to talk about this a little bit. You ever been in a fight? Uh, no, actually. I, I've done very well to not uh, have ever had a conflict before with anyone. Very well? That's that's very that's very not well. <laughs> you mean very unmanly man? <laughs> no, fighting fighting is awesome. Fighting's really fun. It makes you makes you feel like a man. I mean, obviously, there I'm sure there are there are females on the channel who who would not uh, feel the same way because they don't really want to feel like a man. But I'm sure you know uh, the uh, I'm sure killing I'm not killing. <laughs> I never killed anyone. I'm just gonna put that. So it's just a confession episode where you confess yeah. to having sex with them people. You <laughs> killed a man. You probably had sex with that man who you killed. We. <laughs> well. While drinking whiskey. While drinking whiskey, playing, playing poker in a, some <laughs> shitty casino in Florida. Man, this yeah. is like all what happened one night, right? And you're just this laying is, it all on the line. It was a crazy night. What, what can I say? You know, yeah, when, when whiskey you, does that. Whiskey. Oh, man, right. I forgot about this guy. This has, this, they have like four damaged missiles. Oh, uh, wow. Those are rough. Those <laughs> are rough. But it actually didn't work out poorly, so... Yeah, but no, speaking of fight, no, I, I've never in a, been in a legitimate fight. It's probably a good thing because I'm not well fit for a fight, I'll say that right now. <laughs> oh, I, I, I'll, I'll be clear here. I'm not a good fighter, but I've been in a lot of fights, and I don't know, it, it's just, it's a fun time. I'll be, like, now, I don't really care so much. When I was a bit younger, I was always just like, hey, let's go, let's go fight somebody. <laughs> um, but like, but like, now, I don't, I don't really care for it so much, but I I, I, I I've always used words, like a to get I, out of situations. I don't know, I've just never actually been in that situation where someone is angering me to the point... Well, no, I'm, let's not say that. On Xbox Live, pretty much every day, <laughs> I've been in a situation where I'm like, I want to punch the fuck out of you. But, uh, <laughs> no. You're saying that I don't, I don't pick fights. I don't really like starting fights. I, but, like, if a situation arises where I feel like I'm in the right, uh, and I have to punch a guy... Or somebody starts swinging, or like hits my friend, or something. Well, you I mean, live in New York, so that probably has something to do with it. Yeah, I mean, I guess. I it, mean, it, I, living in Houston, there's nowhere to go to go out. Right. So yeah, you usually don't. Yeah. You usually go to like the bowling alley, or I can go see a movie. You never right, right. do anything else. I'm also not old enough to go to a bar, so that probably has something to do with it as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure lots of fights start in bars. I, I myself I, I mean i I've, i'm old enough to go to a bar but i don't because i don't know i find it very almost sad <laughs> to go to bars <laughs> I don't know. I, like i don't i don't, I don't I, it's one thing that bothers me too is because we have so much alcohol in this house it's such a fun time when we have parties here and people are like hey let's go to a bar it's like we have all this stuff here we have funness why would we go to a nasty disgusting bar and and sit at an uncomfortable stool uh, to a uh, why well, like, normally I would say that it's to get ladies, but the thing is, or conversely, to get males. But, I mean, the thing is, though, like, I mean, do you really want to try to pick up chicks at a bar? Not the, I mean, I, you know, it's a stereotypical place, too, but I don't, I don't think that'd be the best place. Yeah, I mean, it, I don't know. I don't know. But bars, bars always kind of throw me off. But, I, but also, uh, the, the point that I was originally going to try to make was that uh, even if I had gone to a bar and, like, had the opportunity to be in a bar fight, I don't think I'd want to. There's so many, like, glass bottles around. <laughs> yeah, like, that could turn uh, deadly quickly. Yeah, there's so Someone many grabs weapons. a bottle, slashes it on the table. You got some, you got some Dude, more than a fight. Yeah, you don't want to deal with that kind of nonsense. No. By the way, smashing a bottle doesn't really work that well. And another note is I've seen this in a fight once before where somebody was hitting another guy in the face with a, with a bottle, with a beer bottle. That shit does not break. Those are made well. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you for a fact that made one of the most uncomfortable sounds that I have ever heard in my life. I just heard it being hit. Yeah, it was like, tum, 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 like like on someone's face, and I was just like, oh god, I am glad I'm not that guy. Yeah, <laughs> I'm so glad I picked the right side of this fight. Yep, yep. But. but. Uh, <laughs> No, I mean, you know, fighting fighting can be a fun time. Um, you know, it, it's it's a good way to get uh, energy out. And you know, I've I've actually made a lot of friends through fighting. Cause you know, <laughs> when fight, it's often like uh, <laughs> so ass backwards. <laughs> well, no, when when men fight, like it, it's often like like oh, I beat the shit out of this guy, or like we were beating the shit out of each other. And it's just like, all right, I'm done now. You want to grab a beer? <laughs> well, like, you already you already <laughs> in a bar, so you know. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I enjoyed it. 
for a time. I probably wouldn't enjoy it so much now, but uh, I don't know. Fight, fighting can be fun. Yeah, I've I, also never seen Fight Club, so that might have something to do with it as well. Oh, I well, you know, uh, coincidentally, Fight Club was one of my favorite movies for a long time. So uh, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe that does have some sort of. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, and actually. You've never seen Fight Club. I know we've already got. Don't be. We've been over this nine billion times. But dude, if you're gonna watch a movie, watch Fight Club. You've said that like seven times. I yeah, I know. But like seriously, Fight Club is one of the best movies like ever made. Probably. (laughs) I have like seven movies now that if I've never seen a movie, I have to see those movies. Yeah, there's 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 there are quite a few that that you need to see. I'm I'm just not a movie guy. This is the thing probably just seen the right movies that's the thing I uh, know I mean I love some movies uh, I, <laughs> I don't know I wouldn't be able to list you Barbie if, Prince Party yeah I mean that was a good movie it was a good film I, I will say the writing was pretty pretty spot on uh, on, on a similar uh, funny subject one of my favorite movies I saw in the movie theater was fucking Pokemon the original OG that movie well, it was it was good when I was a that, child that movie well d- that's so the point good film <laughs> <laughs> I know, but that's not the point. I mean, I'm just trying to list movies that I've seen that uh, stuck with me. That was, uh, that was, Space Jam, that was a good one. Spa- you know, I, I, don't, I think I was too young to remember Space Jam, but I know I've seen it somewhere. How? You I, say No, I have seen it. I know I've seen it. I just don't remember it. Dude, how could you forget Space Jam? I mean, <laughs> I, <laughs> talk like, to my brain that one. He'll, he'll fill you in on how... Uh, it's maybe the most memorable film of all time. You just said that about Fight Club. Well, yeah, but I mean, you know, I'm speaking somewhat ironically here. Uh, but no, I, like really, Space Jam is fantastic. It's uh, it's fantastic in that it's not good. That's that's what makes it fantastic. And Bill Murray's in it. I mean, really, all you have to do here's a good thing. Here's a good tip, uh, movie uh, movie makers. If you want my money, put Bill Murray in your movie. That's all you got to do. Yeah, and, uh, that sounds like pretty easy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I will want that. Uh, but no, I, I mean, um, yeah, Space Jam, Fight Club. No, seriously, it, it's directed by one of my favorite modern directors, uh, if not my favorite modern director, which is David Fincher. Like, you ever see The Social Network? Uh, no, I, I, I see. I, I, at the time, I had the seething hate for Facebook, so I was like, I'm not doing anything that has to do with Facebook. I don't I care. Did, it's a good movie. Uh, no, I've heard. I, I've heard. I mean, I'm not yeah, gonna no. say it's a bad movie. I haven't seen it, so. Yeah, no, it's it's well written. It uh, the soundtrack is done by Trent Reznor, who you might know from Nine Inch Nails. Uh, it's, yeah, sounds familiar. Yeah, it, uh, so I, I you know it's it, it's 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 uh, David Fincher makes really good films. He really does. Oh, but also, I, you you are a film guy too. You mean you you yeah, went to I went to film school. school and all that. So yeah, I wouldn't be able to name you one slightly not super famous director. I probably wouldn't be able to name you a lot of the super famous directors. I mean, I got well, Steven Spielberg. Okay. That's about it. <laughs> Steve, that's it. That's the that's the extent of your film knowledge, Steven Spielberg. Uh, when we talk about direct, even I, I'm I'm terrible with actors. I wouldn't be able to name you a lot of actors. Like uh, if I see an actor's face, I'd be like, yeah, that's that guy. But I, if you're like uh, this guy in that movie, I wouldn't be able to tell you the name of the actor. Yeah. I mean, I did what? confuse two actors to you one time. And that was kind of funny. I don't remember what two actors it was. But uh, yeah, it was, I don't I don't remember. But yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, th- th- when you start knowing directors, then then you know that you're a film person. So I, mm-hmm. I don't I don't expect you to necessarily know directors, but I mean knowing films. That's I think that's 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 a fair. Well, no, I know films. I just don't see them. <laughs> I know that they exist. Exactly. My eyes don't really go to them, and my ears don't generally uh, listen to them. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm a big sci-fi fantasy guy too. So those are usually the only movies that I go and I see myself, and that you know. So no, I mean, I like those too. Uh, no, no, I know. I, I didn't say you can't. You can't like sci-fi movies. What are you talking about? Uh, I'm just I'm just a sci-fi guy. Just, well, speaking of sci-fi, have you ever seen uh, Starship Troopers? Uh, Starship Troopers? No, actually, I don't think I've. Heard oh of that. my god! How can you be a fan of science fiction? And not have never have seen Starship. Well, I, I should I should amend that and say current science fiction. Anything past like two thousand. Oh well, I mean, that's a pretty specific thing. I think I'm I'm pretty sure Starship Troopers came out in like maybe oh one. Uh, 
Oh, <laughs> I just got a Skype message from someone I didn't even. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna respond to this real quick because uh, right. per- I haven't talked to this person in a long time. <laughs> in ah. so. Uh, well, tell them you have professional business to work on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, keep going. I will. I will feign attention for about one minute. Starship Troopers uh, is a very good film, and you should watch it. It's done by a director named Paul Verhoeven, and uh, Paul Verhoeven is an amazing director, and here's why. He takes maybe, like, the shittiest scripts in films, like, like the worst scripts that you could possibly write. <laughs> like, Starship Troopers is one of them. Uh, uh, it, it, Robocop is another film that he did, uh, and th- that script is just god awful like it, 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 it is they're incredible. making a new, new robocop aren't they yeah it's gonna be terrible and oh, actually course. my reasoning is is i'm actually going to give you my reasoning right now your reasoning is you're going to give me your reasoning right now right right gotcha. no my re- my reasoning for it is paul verhoeven takes a really shitty script and he makes the movie good um so what he did with with robocop is he made that movie awesome by adding just a bunch of gore and like just funny moments, the same with Starship Troopers, he just takes some kind of, like, really ludicrous concept and makes it really, really good, and does a good job of directing it. Um, and that's the only reason RoboCop was good. See, the issue with Hollywood right now is they're making a remake of RoboCop. L- let me just tell you right now, the premise of RoboCop is awful. <laughs> it is a terrible premise. It's a guy gets shot to hell, and then they rebuild robot armor on him, and then he talks like a robot. Like, <laughs> That's a terrible, terrible premise, and the movie would be terrible if Ver- Paul Verhoeven is not directing it. Yeah. Now, so that, that's that's why you know that, that's that's why I say that that Paul Verhoeven is a good director, and why that remake is going to be awful because they're just operating. They like made RoboCop all cool, like they put <laughs> like his armor is all black now and like uh, not shiny and like uh, like like it's just it's like they're just trying to make RoboCop look like Batman and. And it's like I, you're you're not gonna make RoboCop cool because the concept is ludicrous and it's not meant to be cool. He's not meant to be like a like a super cool like flashy character or anything. It's just meant to be a ridiculous concept that you can make awesome. Yeah, uh, yeah. And it's not meant to be serious. It's meant to be. It, it's almost a farce. Uh, so I don't know. So that's why. Uh, I, I got gotcha. you. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. You know, try and argue with you there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, but again, I, I'll withhold judgment until I see it. I like to do that when uh, when I watch films. Who knows? Maybe maybe we have another Paul Verhoeven on our hands when uh, when it comes to directing this movie. But considering the art direction so far, they look like they're it's taking looking a little bit like what I think it's gonna be. But uh, speaking of upcoming sci-fi movies, the uh, or I guess fantasy sci-fi, uh, the Hobbit is coming out uh, in December. Can't oh, wait for that. That looks pretty darn cool. It looks pretty damn good. You know, I, uh, I you know, I've mentioned this to you uh, in private uh, when we were getting intimate in the bedroom. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the that I was afraid uh, of the Hobbit because I thought that Peter Jackson was just going to make it like you know an epic fantasy tale like uh, like like what you call it. Like uh, like like Lord of the Rings was, and when I read The Hobbit, I loved The Hobbit. Um, but mainly because it's basically a children's book. Like it's 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 a, it's it's a comedy. It's mostly it's mostly humor. And and like for instance, I know I know for a fact that that Peter Jackson is going to have the last fight in that movie, the big epic fight, the Battle of Five Armies. Right? He's mm-hmm. going to make this big epic fight scene. But the thing is, in the book, it didn't happen. Like, right? Or he- well, yeah. Like what happens is, uh, is Bilbo Baggins he gets hit like he yeah. to rush into battle, and then an eagle drops a rock on his head, and he gets knocked out for the whole battle. But doesn't even see it. Um, and uh, and so I mean, I know that Peter Jackson's not gonna have the balls to stand up to the producers and be like, "All right, we're not gonna do this uh, this battle scene. We're just gonna we're just gonna knock Bilbo on the head, and nobody's gonna see it." Um, so I, I don't think they're going to do that. Which and that, that made me afraid. But you know, seeing a lot of those production stills of like how the characters look, it looks like they're going. They're kind of embracing the ridiculousness, which I, I'm I'm pretty happy about. Like yeah, the, yeah. The, uh, I mean, Peter Jackson know? rarely fucks up. I mean, he's got a lot of yes. good movies under his back, so I wouldn't yeah. I wouldn't doubt the guy. 
He's under his. Is he laying down on his films? I said. I said under his belt. It's a common. Oh, I thought you said under his back. No, 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 under his belt. But figuratively, he's laying down while he makes films. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, no, yeah, he 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 does he does some good films. He he he. And uh, I believe he did one of my more recent favorite films, uh, District Nine. Right, that was him. Uh, no, actually, that he, was. He, he produced it, but um, oh, he produced it. There you go. That's the word. Yeah, a, a South African director actually directed it. Um, yeah, because he actually made the short film. The, the South African director, because mm-hmm. it used to be a short film. Yeah, I remember that. I the loved sh- that movie. Did you Did you see the short film? Uh, yeah, actually, I did watch it after I watched the movie. Uh, his name is Neil Blomkamp. That's it. There you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. No. He 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 did that, and actually, uh, he was making the Halo movie too. Yeah. Uh, he was he was set to be the director, but then he stopped. Uh, being the director for that, so that he could make District Nine. Well, I'm glad he made District Nine. <laughs> no, but District Nine was great. But I will say, if you watch the trailer, the kind of teaser trailer they did for the Halo movie, yeah. uh, Neil Blomkamp at the helm. Oh my God, it looked cool. Yeah, I mean, but the pro- with, with the Halo movies, the same thing making any kind of movie with a huge fan base already around the game, you can't fuck up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I mean, you know, like we see that with comic book movies too. Like for a large, long time, it's just like. They weren't handled with respect, you know? Like, the directors obviously were embarrassed to make the films, and, like, they, they, they treated the characters as, like, ridiculous ideas, right? And then right. you had, like, you had directors, uh, like the director of the first two Superman movies, and, uh, and you know, more specifically or more recently, you have, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, you have uh, Christopher Nolan doing the Batman films, and he treats the the subject with respect. He treats the the characters with reverence, and as a story that that could be heard. And you know that's the issue with a lot of comic uh, video game movies right now. It's the same way that uh, the comic book movies uh, ha- has started out. Uh, like the the characters weren't respected. The video game movies aren't respected. I mean, look at all the video game movies that they make. Like they made like Death Race or Mario Brothers and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Mario Brothers. <laughs> do that is because, well, there's no story in those games, so the director or the writer has the kind of liberty to uh, to make up whatever the fuck he wants, and that just doesn't make for a good film. Yeah, no, yeah. Sorry, again, sorry for the dogs barking. There's, there's actually uh, off, there's a hog outside running around, so that's what they're barking at. A uh, hog? Yeah, a hog. I, for some reason, I pictured a man on a big motorcycle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you'd hear that though. You know, that would be definitely. I could hear it. Yeah, it's almost um, like your lawn or of doom. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah, uh, what were we talking movies? Uh, video game movies, right? Uh, a lot. You know, when you talk about video game movies, a lot of the people want. They want Halo. They they want Zelda, which I don't. I don't want to see a Zelda movie. Uh, I even, honestly do, but it just has to be handled well. It, it has to be done. Per- we, we we talked about this a lot off camera, but it has to be done so perfect and so right, and no one has the balls to take a project like that on. Yeah. And even, uh, no one understands the story really. I mean, no, all these old directors they they don't understand it. It's just not. You know what? What's the perfect story for a Zelda movie? Ocarina of Time. That's all you got to do. Just do the Ocarina of Time story, and it could be great. You know, um, I would, you know, I would say the Majora's it, Mask would be better fitted for the movie. Oh, well, I mean, it depends on the director. I would say, like, if you wanted to make a Zelda movie uh, and base it on Ocarina of Time, then I would say you'd get a director like, say, like Christopher Nolan, maybe. Or uh, or you get, say, uh, I don't know. Um, yeah, you know, even Peter Jackson wouldn't be so bad. Yeah. But, 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 but if you do Majora's Mask, you kind of have to go, like, Tim Burton or, like, you know, some sort of like, like really out there kind of director uh, who who makes or like like maybe um, maybe like uh, Aaron. Uh, uh, oh God, what's his name? Not Aaron. You're Darren Aronofsky. Wrong guy. <laughs> <laughs> Darren right. Aronofsky or like uh, you know uh, Paul oh, Thomas Anderson maybe, who yeah. can who can take some like a a very like weird world and make it make sense in in film form. Um, yeah, this this thing is that the oh god, this dog won't shut up. Um, it's the thing is that the, I was just about to say that the world is so weird and the characters are so strange that it, if you're trying to do like a live action, it's just so difficult to pull off because the characters are even like anatomically really strange. And it's right, right, it, right. The, the reason it works is because when you're playing the game, it's more of an experience rather than you just watching something. And trying right. to translate that into something that you just watch. I don't know how you do it. 
Yeah, I mean, your suspension of disbelief is certainly a little bit... You, you have a, a higher, uh, like, ceiling for that uh, in video games. I mean, and that's largely due to how hardware works. Right, right. Because, uh, you know, we, we just don't have <laughs> the tech to make it look, like, not ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, but, yeah, I, but uh, I, I think it could be done. I, I really I, do. I think in the end it could be, but, again, it'd be so difficult to get it down right. Right. Yeah, and I think if anyone would even try, they'd probably end up taking it some off kilter, strange, and doesn't make any sense direction yeah. that would piss yeah. everybody off and lose a lot of respect in the already respectless video game movie industry. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, it, it definitely would. You know, another big issue too is sequelitis. You know, would they want to make a sequel? Well, you can't really make a sequel to Ocarina of Time, except if it's Majora's Mask, I guess. But yeah, uh, but like. You know, uh, and the other issue too is like that game has such a long story. Could it is very that? long. I, so, someone, I, someone actually on Reddit, on one of the Zelda Reddits, uh, was talking about uh, he wrote his he wrote his own script and he would split up like the uh, the Ocarina of Time to like three movies and right. literally do like the entire story, you know, f- word for word in a sense. And uh, thinking about that, I don't know how I'd feel about watching that. I mean, no, I don't think that would be good at all. I, I just don't think you'd have enough climactic moments in three films. Um, right, right. I mean, you think of the moments in the, in the, in the game, they would be... You could probably do the first part where Link is going through the first three dungeons, and then the end when he meets Ganondorf and right. t- takes the sword out, and that would probably be a good end for that part. Uh, but after that, nothing happens until the end. That would be the big climactic finish. Right, right. But yeah. I'd, I'd, like one of the things that I'd really like to see would be the uh, the temples and the dungeons, just because the art in those places are amazing. It's one of the strong points of the series is is the dungeons and how they look and how they the atmosphere around those. I'd love to see that in live action in a really realistic Definitely. setting. Uh, Definitely, yeah. I mean, um, you know, the big issue would be that that they would largely probably focus on the uh, oh, uh, they would focus largely, I'm sure, on the spectacle, which uh, Aristotle. Uh, in poetics, uh, warns that um, that that is a, not a good way to make any kind of artistic piece, uh, and and to really to elaborate on that concept, right? Uh, focusing on the spectacle, um, that means like special effects. So so yeah. Aristotle, when they would make big plays, you know, they they would make big budget plays in Greece too, and uh, and they would have like cool special effects, like you know fire breathers or you know some like crazy shit, you know, the, to make the story cool. Um, you know the Michael Bay of ancient Greece, sure. Yeah. Uh, and you know he say that doesn't you know, that doesn't make for a good film um, or a good you know play, uh, mm-hmm. and he's right uh, because you look at a movie like uh, Transformers and that's yeah. op- that's all spectacle. There's no story, uh, and because of that, the movies are terrible. Um, uh, so uh, so my fear with a Zelda movie is that they would focus on the spectacle. Uh, uh, instead of the story, and the story is is really more important, I think. Especially Link as a character is such a cool character well, because thing, do you, he. Do you, well, you think yeah. he should talk? Uh, in, in I the, don't in think. The, talk. No, of course. I mean, that, that's one of his. You know, the best thing about Link is he doesn't talk. And right. It, yeah. It, mm. I mean, that that's a lot harder to pull off in a movie. Exactly. Yeah. But I, it's doable. I think it's doable. Um, I really do. I mean, you look at you look at say like the good, the bad, and the ugly, right? Uh, or, or even just all of those Sergio Leone uh, spaghetti western films, uh, like the main character, the man with no name, he uh, he doesn't really talk that often. He talks very rarely, and you know you could even go that far as to make Link maybe talk extremely rarely. Mm-hmm. But I, I think I think you could even pull it off where he just doesn't speak. Um, right, see, right. But the issue is with Zelda too is they kind of kind of actually hint that Link actually does speak. In Skyward Sword, they do it a lot, uh, in, in a couple oh, of scenes, he, he it'll the camera will zoom out, and he will be doing hand motions, and and uh, you won't hear anything. There won't be any dialogue text out of it, but you can see that he's actually explaining and talking. Right. Yeah. See, I don't like that because they make it they make it kind of a joke that he can't speak, and I I think I think they could. I don't know. I, I think even in the video games, they could. They, they're, they're trying to. I don't know. Right. Well, we, we could sit here and discuss flaws about Skyward Sword all day, but. Yeah, well, I've never played it, but... Yeah, well, I guess I could. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, no, I, I mean, um, it's doable. I, I really do think it's doable. Whether you can do it in two hours or three hours even, I don't know. Um, that was weird. I saw, like, a flash of light next to me. 
Uh, anyway. <laughs> By, by the way, I think someone takes pictures of my room or, like, my building or something. Because I swear to God, like, a couple times at night sometimes where I'll just see a flash of light from, like, across the way. And I, there's no lightning or anything. Just you're being stopped. It's a possibility. But anyway, um, yeah, I mean, it could be done in a miniseries. Uh, but I don't know if it would have the kind of budget that that would be kind of necessary to make that properly. I don't think I don't think it would come off very well either. It, it would have yeah. to be big and grandiose to work. Yeah, I mean, uh, you would run into a lot of the same issues I feel with the Zelda movie as they ran into with uh, Zack Snyder's Watchmen movie. I don't know if you saw that. I didn't see that one either. It's uh, it's it's pretty bad. I mean, and and it, in truth. It's bad because they tried to condense a, uh, like, 400-page graphic novel filled with details. Like, there are a couple pages of that graphic novel where it's just, like, walls of text. Um, they tried to condense that into a two-hour film, and you just simply can't do that. Right, uh, right. You, you, just, you just can't. Uh, and because of that, it came off really shitty. And, and the truth is, I honestly think Zack Snyder didn't do a bad job. I think he was just tasked with an impossible task. Mm -hmm. um, and largely, I think that's what would happen with the Zelda movie, is that it, it, it's, the scope is too large for uh, such a short experience as film. Yep. Uh, it, it, it's really it's best done as a game. <laughs> I mean, that sounds kind of old off, but... In no, the end. No, you know, that, that's actually not... It, it, the, what, what's funny is, uh, it's funny that you mentioned that, because uh, the writer, Alan Moore, the writer of, uh, of The Watchmen, what he said about... He, he famously hates anyone ever making a movie of any of... He never endorses it. Uh, anyone ever making a movie of any of his comics. Because he says, uh, specifically in The Watchmen, that he does things in that comic book that you can only really do in the comic book medium. You can't really emulate that. In uh, in film or anything like he does, he does a bunch of things, and, and it's true. If you if you read it, there, there's a couple points where it's just like, well, that can't really be emulated in in uh, in film. Uh, and I think it, it, that's that's a large issue with uh, what you call it as well with uh, video game movies. Is like, you know, a lot of video games take liberties that only that medium can really handle. Which is why I think like a Gears of War movie or a Halo movie that would work because those are generally short experiences. Um, and a condensed story, and yeah. you know, well, you can't make. Did, did I hear they were going to make a Gears of War movie somewhere? Uh, they did. Yeah, they they, they were like they they casted like uh, Bruce Willis as Marcus Phoenix, which would have been <laughs> ass. Uh, uh, and like I don't know, they, like it's it's doable. I think I really do. But yeah, I, re I I did really enjoy the story out of the first Gears of War, even I mean that was you know short and all that. But I, that that it's one of the games where uh, on the Xbox that I really enjoyed. Uh, for its single player experience, but the next two, bleh. <laughs> but right, anyway. I, 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 to be truthful, I, I never really played either of them, um, but uh, or any of them uh, rather. Right. But uh, you know, it, the I, I do think that they would make for a good film experience. Yeah, no, I can see it. Really do. I think <laughs> if they if they want to if you, they wanted honestly that could be like one of the ones that would be handled well and uh, and could make video game movies relevant because one, that would just sell crazy mm -hmm. like that would just sell super hard uh, and you know two it, it could be handled well I mean if it's if it's handled well and they develop the world properly uh, it could be cool yeah yeah. Yeah, it's just no one wants to do it. <laughs> no one wants to even try. Yeah, well, you know, again, that's it's that uh, it's that issue with the, you know video game movies focus on the spectacle, and you know, a lot of again, that's that's the thing too is Hollywood is a very hipster place, uh, uh, and, and let me explain what I mean by that. Like with comic book movies, especially, Tim Burton famously said, uh, and Kevin Smith made fun of him for this. Uh, Tim Burton famously said. Uh, after the what should we call it? Uh, but basically, what happened is Kevin Smith uh, wrote a comic book, and then he was just like, "Oh, Tim Burton stole this idea from my comic," and uh, and Tim Burton's just like, "Well, if any of my friends, if you talk to any of my friends, you would know that they would never catch me reading a comic book." And then uh, and then t and then uh, I think I saw this. Replied. Yeah, it's funny because then Kevin Smith replied, "Well, then that explains Batman." 
<laughs> because you know it's it's that thing where we're like they they're they're embarrassed by it. And Christopher Nolan wasn't embarrassed by it. He thought it was a relevant subject. And you know, the Dark Knight. They mentioned this in like a cracked article. The Dark Knight. There is a scene where where a man in a bat suit is yelling at a clown and trying to find out where a woman is. And everyone sits in the theater silently, like not even laughing at the ludicrousness of the concept. <laughs> they are they are enthralled by the dramatic uh, nature of the scene, mm-hmm. and that's 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 amazing. You know, that's that's good filmmaking, and it just shows you that that like it doesn't matter what the concept is. If you make a good movie, a good movie is a good movie. Um, and it's the same for video games. And I, I think a lot of directors are just afraid that you know there will be some sort of a, a stigma. To uh, to to making a video game movie, which largely there probably would be. Uh, yeah, there's also this, there's this lack of respect too. They don't. You right, know. right. Uh, the film industry, like I said, it's very it's very hipster. Yeah, I mean it's it's funny too because when you get down to it, the experience in games is so much more deep than it is in movies. Yeah, I mean in a lot of ways, definitely. Um, I, I think I, I think you know I used to think more like that. And then, uh, you know, I realized that they are different mediums for different experiences. Like, I would say that video games are more likened to books, uh, whereas uh, films are, of course, more likened to plays. I mean, you're, you're getting a, a condensed experience in a film, uh, but in, in, a, uh, in a book or even a TV series and a video game, you're getting long-form drama. You know, you're getting a very long-form experience. You get to follow the characters for a long way and the one thing that video games have up on say movies and stuff is uh and i've always said this is what's the one thing that films try to do when they try to have immersion right like what are they trying to do they they try to like you you can look at like steven spielberg's work and what he does is he he works a lot with perspective right so like it's it's heavily based on characters perspective um so, like, if you're following a character, you're going to follow that one character. You're not going to see, like, a cut to the vet bad guy or something because the good guy is not there. Um, and why do you do this? Well, you're trying to establish uh, immersion, and that immersion is done by making you feel like you're like the protagonist, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, making you feel like you are that guy. Video games have the leg up on film right there, like, on the onset because you are the protagonist. Yeah. There's no, there's no making you feel like you're the protagonist. You're him, so or or her, um, or it. So yeah, I or mean, it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so like video games have that kind of leg up there. So. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you know. Exactly. Uh, I had a thought. Uh, oh right. I think the, there we go. You were saying about how the usually sticks only on the protagonist. W- one of the, the things I love is uh, Game of Thrones. How it throws that aspect out the window. You, right, right. You're, you're looking at the pro... I mean, there really is no protagonist and antagonist because it's such a... We, I, I kind of want to say this, but, like, if we do actually do a podcast, I could talk about Game of Thrones for hours upon hours because of how much <laughs> I love it. But, um, yeah, I mean, you, you jump from the hero to the villain to the kind of villain to the kind of hero to the... I don't know what this guy's doing to the... You just jump around. It's crazy. I'm going to stop you for just one second. I'm about to fight the rebel flagship. Oh, oh are you? Out there. Yeah. Um, yeah. So... Yeah, no, 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 definitely. Uh, it, well, that's an example of an ensemble piece. So, you know, uh, uh, usually long-form narratives, like, say, uh, a TV show, that's yeah. how they handle it. They, they give you a bunch of characters, so you don't ever get bored of the protagonist. Mm-hmm. You know, and they, that show is a def- definitely a good example of ensemble done really well. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, but I, mean, I just want to kind of gush about Game of Thrones, which is why I brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, they—they they really they couldn't have done it without the writing of Martin. I mean, his writing is just out of this fucking planet. How he yeah, does it, you know, he handles it. You know, he handles it uh, a lot of the way that I like fantasy. I like I like low low craziness fantasy. You know, uh, Lord of the Rings does this as well, where like magic like that kind of stuff is understated you don't see like a giant fireball coming out of Gandalf you know yeah. he, he, like says some words and then you know a fucking storm comes or something <laughs> you know, like uh, like I like the kind of understated magic magic is an undertone because magic is magical you know what I mean Yeah. like if, if it's not esoteric 
if it's not understated, then it's not magical. It's not. It's it's just not. And mm-hmm. uh, and a lot of a lot of fantasy, a lot specifically fantasy video games, get that way wrong. Yeah, I yeah. Think. I mean, in Game of Thrones, you have like at the beginning they they open with the scene of uh, the uh, what is it the white the White Walker. Yeah. And uh, you, you, at the beginning, you think, "Wow, so this is going to be a crazy magic thing." Like they they throw they throw you the wrong direction at the beginning, right. because they immediately throw it right at you. Like, what the hell is this zombie person thing going around? And, and it throws the mystery out there for you, and it sets the mystery up for you. And then immediately you go into the game, and you don't. Or, sorry, you go into the show, and you don't hear anything about it. You don't see any magic at all, and you're like, "Wait, wait, what? Well, what the hell was that then?" And it's beautiful yeah. because now you're in the place of the people in the show. You don't know what the fuck's going on. Mm-hmm. Well, the- that's exactly that's you know you know what that is. That's an example of perspective. That's right. that's perspective being used well, and, and wh- part of the reason why I love Steven Spielberg, because if you if you deal with perspective, like say you you had another film or, or TV series that cuts to the bad guy, well you've just lost mystery, right? It's yeah. a lot of issues with with horror films too, where where okay you're going to show me the bad guy, uh, and I don't see it from the character's perspective. I'm not scared. I'm not with the characters. But you show the White Walkers, and then you you just show a guy who's terrified with the White Walkers. I even think that they could have went even farther. Of course, they did it kind of by the book, but um, but like like and just show the guy talking about the White Walkers, you know, um, because because the main characters never saw it, so they don't know. And uh, right, they do have that scene though at at the begin at the beginning where. Uh Ned is, get, catches the guy who ran, who survived the attack, and he kind of right. That's what I mean. I think yeah. I think the show it could even be it could have even been better if uh, if the show started there instead. Mm-hmm. You know, if 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 we didn't even see that this guy, we didn't know if he was crazy or not. You know, and and again, that's 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 that, that's that perspective thing, and that's what Steven Spielberg does very well, uh, and that's what makes a lot of his movies so suspenseful and and so good is because you know I'm seeing it from the perspective of the character. I know as much as he does. Uh, and that that means that you know mystery is there, any kind of mystery. Right, right. It, it is all good stuff. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, and again, that's the, one of the main issues with horror films, where or, mm-hmm. m- or modern horror films, where they focus on the monster. Like, look how cool this like really awesome monster is, uh, mm-hmm. or how scary it is. So it's like, well, one, I don't find children <laughs> who sound like cats scary. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Game a thing, but uh, but but and then for two, like if you show me the monster over and over again, and you don't make it any kind of a mysterious figure, there's no suspense. Yeah. That that's uh, speaking of horror. This is the only horror I've ever. Se- I, I'm not a fan of horror. I'm not gonna lie because I'm a huge fucking pussy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm I'm not gonna mince words there. I I do not do well with horror. But uh, but um, uh, Marble Hornets. The uh, Slenderman story on YouTube. No, not the fucking game. This came way before the game. Don't bring that up. Um, have you have you seen it? Have you heard of it at least? Uh, you told me about it, but I never oh. really watched it. Yeah, it, it, it's so. It, it does what you talk about. You rarely see the uh, the uh, the Slenderman, the evil guy. You never see him, uh, and when you when you do see him, it freaks the fuck out because you only see him for a split second. You have no idea who he is, what he is, what he's doing, why he's there. You have no idea, and it keeps you in this realm of suspense. That's the way horror should be. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No. Definitely. I mean, uh, if <laughs> you, you know, one of the main lessons that they teach you if you take a writing class in film or something, one of the main lessons that they teach you is show, don't tell. So, uh, what that means is, it's like, say you want to make a mysterious character, you don't have like eight. Th- this is actually one of the main problems with the newsroom, uh, that HBO show. Yeah, uh, it's, you don't you don't just have like a bunch of characters testifying to that, uh, like a bunch of characters talking about like, oh, this guy's so mysterious, oh, this guy's so dangerous. Show him being dangerous. Show him being mysterious. Because then the it, it's so much more fulfilling for the audience to just just you know uh, divine that themselves uh, than than just being like, oh, this guy's mysterious. You don't you don't have to tell me. It, it, right. Because that, that's the kind of thing. It's the same thing with uh, with video games, with uh, oh. tutorials. Oh god! I was j- you literally. I was just about to wait for you to stop talking so I could bring that up. Yeah, so, yeah. Today's oh, games. Just go look at. I mean, oh, I um, I can tell you about it. If you've never seen the video Sequelitis, you mentioned that earlier. The Sequelitis video is by Ego Raptor. 
uh, go look up those videos. He does an excellent job, especially as a Mega Man one, where he explains uh, about games and how current games are fucking dumb and the way old games did it. They were the word he uses a lot subtle. They 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 taught you how to do stuff without throwing it at your face, like you press A to jump. Good to know. I mean, I right. literally could have. I mean, things that you can do by just t pressing every button. I mean, yeah, yeah. that's the thing is that w when a when a pr gamer gets the hand of a controller and they start playing a game, they start pressing all the fucking buttons to see what they do. I mean, that's instinct. That's what you do. You mean you move? You usually jump with A. You usually do something. I mean, it's and it's getting so formulaic too, to where you don't need to mention things. A is always jump most right. of the time. B is usually melee. X is usually the action button. You know, R is usually, you know, I don't really have to explain this, but I'm talking to a bunch of gamers. I mean, actually, I'm talking to a bunch of PC gamers, so maybe I do need to explain it, but... Yeah. Um, and so you don't need tutorials throwing things at your face. And even things that you might think need tutorials don't actually need tutorials. He, explain, right. he explains in this video about Mega Man X, which I do a Let's Play, um, is that there's this, in the, in, in, the, uh, in the first stage, right as the game starts, literally no tutorial, no intro cutscene, you're doing this right off the bat, is that you get, uh, you get sent down uh, the level, like you go through the level, and one of the part of the level in a bridge collapses, and you get stuck down, and you have no way of getting back up. And then, so what it does is that, so you're like, oh shit, I can't jump up, what, what do I do? And if you go over to one of the walls, which is generally where you're led to by the design of what's there after you beat this little boss, uh, you slide down the wall all slow and a little smoke trail appears and everything. So you get this instinct like, oh hey, well let's try something, and you hit the A button and it's like, bam, you can wall jump. It's like, whoa, they taught me how to wall jump without even fucking telling me that I could do it. Right, right, right. Yeah, no, I mean, uh... It, although I will say, if I wanted to make a criticism of Mega Man X, it does one of the things that I fucking hate when video games do this. What's that? Uh, uh, you know the boss on that first level. Uh, uh, yes. It, it's unbeatable, right? No, that, that, but that's the glory of it, though. You're meant to no, but you're meant to you're meant to fail at the boss. That that I always hated that in video games where it's like. Uh, by the way, I just I just died here. Uh, I just beat and the second I have part of the awesome red score. Oh uh, yeah. The best score at the time. On my on my thing, uh, but uh, uh, yeah, no, uh, they they do the thing where where they don't they don't tell you if you're supposed to be able to beat this boss, and you know I get like terrified because it's like oh god I fucked up on the first level. I'm yeah, but do. oh this is this is the beautiful thing about it that he he actually explained this in this video is that it's meant to make you feel scared and helpless. It that's the goal of the the scene. It's like you know you fight that you you fight one of the first bosses. There's no health meter. Mind you, that's another key part, is that it doesn't tell you how much health either of the bosses have. And so, when you fight the first mini-boss in that area, you, you're led to believe that you can fight this boss too. And then it fucks your shit up, and you can't do anything. You're like, well, what am I doing wrong? And then Mr. Hero Zero comes in, and fucks the guy right back up, and you're like, what? It, yeah, right, you get, right. You get him one hit. And then it's, he, and, meant be, it's meant to be a setup for Zero to show how And it's cool. also meant to show you how cool you will be at the end of the game, too. Because he basically says, you can be as powerful as I am, and then you get all the upgrades that makes you look more like him and act more like him. And it, it, it's beautiful game design. So, Igor does such a better job explaining this than I do. Go watch that video. I'll probably even put a link in the description. You've probably already seen it, too. It's a really popular video. Uh, but, yeah. I, I may disagree with Ego Raptor on the subject. Maybe not on Mega Man, because honestly it wasn't that bad in Mega Man, because it wasn't like a late game boss. It was the no, first it was like, level. It was the first level, yeah. yeah. It wasn't yeah. even a level, actually. It was the intro stage. Right, right, yeah. That, yeah, that actually was the tutorial stage. It's a funny joke, because that level's pretty hard. I died a bunch of times. Right? <laughs> that right. game, I'll I play Mega Man X2 on my channel. That game's also uh -huh. very hard. Yeah, yeah, Mega Man games are notoriously hard. The X but games were pretty easy. But we, if we do do a podcast, that's the first thing we're talking about, is how we say it's hard, but that's the way it should fucking be. Right, right. But we'll yeah, get no. to that in another uh, thing. Yeah, but, but uh, uh, the so it's not a big... I think as a mechanic in video games in general, I don't like it. Uh, right. But in that game, it's, it's not so bad. It's understated, so I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not as bad. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it can be extremely frustrating. Like, they had this issue in... Uh, I think it was Ninja Gaiden 3 or something. Ninja like, it was just like, re yeah, there's just like, it's like in the middle of the game, there's this really tough boss who you spend like maybe, because you have a bunch of upgrades by that point, you spend maybe like, you know, 20 minutes fighting this boss. And then in the end, you die, and then you find out, oh, 
that's just part of the story. You never were meant to beat the character, and it's just like, well, fuck you, game, because right. you just wasted my time. You <laughs> literally just wasted my time. You right, artificially right. elongated the the time on your level, and you know that's it's not right. Yeah, no, um, but I mean, in, in in Mega Man, they do it. You die in like you know a, right, a, yeah, a you few get, hits, it, and it's pretty early. He yeah. doesn't let you avoid him. You can't avoid him. He's gonna beat the shit out of you anyway. Oh, you can you. I, I've actually I did like kind of challenge runs when I was a kid playing Mega Man X just to see how long I could last against that against that boss. You can do a good amount of damage uh, in that early thing. You could spend like maybe ten fifteen minutes, but generally speaking, they're assuming that you've never played Mega Man before. And right. People who have never played Mega Man before, like again, like when I first played it, I, yeah, I was dead in ten seconds. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so that's the idea. Right. Um, right. But you know. As as a general mechanic, I I think that's a big no no in video games. Mm-hmm. I, I can see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. It's almost as bad as like slow moving projectiles. <laughs> oh, God, that is. You, you know you know what what is a good example of the worst possible boss design ever. What's that? Uh, is uh, in Prototype Two. There's this boss that you fight in the mid. Oh no, not Prototype Two. Prototype One. I never played Prototype Two. Uh, there's this big boss that you fight in Times Square, and it literally, uh, it, it literally is everything that is bad about bad boss battles <laughs> to one boss. Oh, it's like, no. It's moving projectiles. There's, uh, there's like, uh, oh god, it is like, like a super high damage and forcing you to go and get behind cover and just like wait for a while, and then like just like a bunch of things that were like attack. You can't dodge. Oh, uh, those are the worst. Yeah, where it's just like, hey, fuck you for playing our game. Here's some damage that you can do nothing about. That's that's just horrible game design. I mean, every attack should be avoidable. Some may be more avoidable than others, but every attack should be avoidable. Right. Yeah, you know, I talk about this extensively in some of my Isaac videos, because there are a couple rooms in Isaac where, unless you have a specific set of items, you just can't not take damage. The squiggly and that, room with bombs in the caves, the cash right. rooms. Yeah, that's that's just that's. I disagree with Edmund Millen. I think that is just bad game design because right, right. that's that's that kind of learned helplessness thing, and that's not good. That's not that's not good to do in a game because it should be more based on your skill. You should be able. You can make a difficult room, and there are a lot of difficult rooms in the Binding of Isaac. Oh yeah. Um, but but. If you were good enough, you, I have to feel like if I were good enough, I could have not taken damage there. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I even tried on those rooms my damnedest to not take damage, and it's just can't do it. Yeah, yeah. There's there, there's a couple where it's just like, hey, screw you, you uh, you 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 shouldn't play my game anymore. Right, right. Um, and, and that that's just I, I just think that's just, just that's just shoddy game design. It, it's a it's a cop out. Um, but I mean, you know, don't don't take this as uh, as like me hating Binding of Isaac. I have like maybe over a hundred episodes on my channel right now. Yeah, so, I can I can, you know. uh, I can I can agree. <laughs> right, right. So I mean, I, I don't I don't have an issue with Binding of Isaac, but there are a few things that I definitely, you know, have an issue with. Although yeah. I will say, uh, is something that I've been meaning to mention. You know, when you play any game for a hundred hours or more. Uh, you are going to find every glaring weakness. Of <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, largely the game is not flawed, uh, but there are flaws. I mean, there's flaws in anything. But yeah, I mean, Nothing's if you spend o- over a hundred hours on any game, you're gonna find some flaws. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. And it, uh, it's one thing that it's really sad though is that <laughs> Binding of Isaac. How much did you spend on that game? Five dollars. Oh yeah. And how many hours? I have like 210, 20 hours on that game. Yeah, I have about the same, yeah. What? <laughs> what? I don't, that, that kind <laughs> that's of like a couple time. pennies for an hour of entertainment. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's uh, the kind of value that you get out of that game. I mean, FTL too. Yeah. Uh, they, oh. uh, you don't you don't get that, uh, especially for a lot of modern mainstream AAA games. sixty dollar games. Right, you play right. it for like twenty hours. Although I will say, I mean, if your experience is good, then then the extra price for your hours is worth it. And yeah. my example, the example that I will give is the Uncharted games. Those games are just so good. I think those are, are marvels of modern game design. Uh, 
that that th- those games are so good. They're short. They're like maybe ten hours. Really? Uh, yeah. No. No. They're they're short games. Uh, Ooh, but I don't know if that would I wouldn't spend six hours on ten hour game no matter how no, good it was. You don't, you don't understand. Those ten hours you will have watched. It, it would it, it would have. Uh, well, I mean that that is also uh, assuming that you're good at the game. Uh, I mean, I, 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 I might be undercutting it. It may, it may be like, you know, fifteen to twenty hours, but still, I mean, it's short. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but the thing is, the experience that you get within those ten hours are far exceed what you get in many other games, and so much so that it is totally, totally worth the money. Um, despite the fact that you're not going to get as much bang for your buck, let's say, than the Binding of Isaac. Right. But, uh, you know, it, it's definitely worth it for the experience of those games. I mean, they're just that good. Yeah, I think the uh, the general 20 to 30 hour average for single player experiences is rather low. Yeah, I, I don't think... I mean, the, the issue is that that's the norm. It that, is. That, that's the issue. Because um, people just, uh, companies use multiplayer as an excuse. Oh, right. we have multiplayer. You can spend hundreds of hours playing the same thing over and over. Right, right. That's a, that's a way to artificially extend uh, exactly hours on your game, which is and even not... and a lot of these damn games have artificial ways of extending the game within the gameplay mechanics themselves. Right, right. Yeah, the yeah. pointless fetch quests, obnoxiously long or obnoxiously large amounts of cutscenes. Yep, uh, yep, yep. The the necessity to grind at all. Yeah. I mean, the fact of the matter is, if you have to grind in a single-player game to win, then that is bad game design. Yep. That's it. That's, that is just the fact. If you made an RPG and you have to grind to win and it's just single-player, you have made a bad game. I mean, I would uh, disagree saying probably Pokemon would be the only one that uh, does... Uh, I think the grinding is actually fun. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, that—that's the difference. Like, I—I—I I, I was, I was actually about to make that point. Like, I don't find the grinding bad in Pokemon because, I mean, the, for, in truth, you don't have to grind to win the game. Mm-hmm. That, yeah, that, really that's what really. I mean. You, not, not at all. I mean, if you, if you, uh, if you level up your Pokemon correctly and and you fight, like, everybody along the way, and you do as the story intends, you don't have to grind. I, I've never had to grind in a Pokemon game. Uh, although I will say that I have because I want to level up some some other Pokemon that I got that I think is really cool. Yeah, yeah. You know, but but the, but the, but what I mean is like necessary grinding is bad. Um, mm-hmm. I don't I don't think Pokemon necessarily fits that category because uh, yeah I, I just I don't the necessity isn't there. You don't have to grind. You'll maybe have less fun and less variety if you don't grind, but. Um, the necessity yeah. isn't there, is what I'm saying. Not not really grinding, but, but one of the things that really disappoints me about a game that I really, really like, that's a, kind of the dark point of the whole game, is uh, in Metroid Prime 2, um, in the, in the, in, at the end of Metroid Prime 2, you have a huge fetch quest where you basically go back and collect a bunch of things. Oh, backtracking. Ugh. Well, no, me- backtracking is a thing in Metroid that some people don't like, but I like the backtracking because the environments are really cool and it's fun to move around in that game, but that's another subject. Uh, right. It's not really bad. It's it's more of you go around and you have to search a bunch for things that were hidden that you get an item or you can now find them. Right. And it was done. It was there was the same thing in Metroid Prime One, but it was done so much better because you usually had the ability to get these collectibles. You just didn't know how to do it. And right. so there would be this thing. Like one of the best ones is there's this thing hidden in a, in a rock in the middle of one of the lava caverns in Metroid Prime. It's one of these things that you need to get to the end of the game, but you don't need it till the end of the game. And uh, basically, if you had a, you, you you have the super missile by the time you pass that, and you'll pass that rock a bunch of times too, because that, that that area is one of the most backtracked areas in that game. You always go through magmore caverns, but uh, but if you you have the super missile most of the time, and if you just shoot that little pill that has sort of cracks in it, they're not totally obvious. But if you shoot them, I gotta be quick because we're about to run out of time. But if you shoot it, you'll get the item. You can collect it right then and there. And there's even hints once you get to that part in the game. And it actually, I think it introduces it to you right at the beginning of the game that you need to collect these things too, if I remember correctly. So right. it was it was done so much more. It was so much better in Metroid Prime One. In Metroid Prime Two, they introduced it at the end of the game. You just went back and through all the places you've already been. And right. It's kind of right. Disappointing. But Metroid Prime yeah. Two is still a great game. I just died, by the way. So we're getting towards the end of the video. Right, right, right. So, and, uh, and final you can assessment see on the screen. 
Uh, and yes. I destroyed you. You you did win um, by quite a bit, quite a boot. Yep. Uh, as the as the Canadians would say. Um, but <laughs> that's not how they'd say it. That's not what they would say at all. <laughs> no. But uh, as an assessment, uh, would you guys want to see a video without gameplay of us doing like a podcast, which would be literally what you just saw without the video, um, discussing things about games and entertainment and anything really? We'll try to avoid the uh, the dead people sex subjects, though. Uh, unless you uh, want to talk about that, I mean, I'm not gonna promise that that <laughs> will be the case. Uh, to be honest with you, we'll uh, we'll just have to see. But yeah, we that we'd be totally cool to do a, bo- a podcast like one, once a week, every certain day, because uh, it's really fun to sit here and talk and express opinions and such. Definitely, definitely. Well, I mean, it was part of the reason that. Uh, I believe we made YouTube channels, right? I mean, <laughs> we, yeah, want, uh, yeah. we, we like the sound of our own voices, and we like uh, we I like our. I hate opinions. the sound of my own voice. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't. I don't like listening to myself, but but I, but, but I will say I do like my opinions, and I like. Yeah, to, but to I find opinion. it's really hard. Like this probably uh, sounds a lot better if you if compare this to when um, I'm playing a game and trying to talk about something serious. I my my thoughts are much more organized now than they are when trying to play a game at the same time. So yeah, that's yeah. the one reason I like this, is I don't have to think at two different places at once. But actually, weird looks like we're out of time. Uh, yeah, all right. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Uh, would you like to say goodbye? Yeah, yeah. Uh, peace, fools. Yep, see you guys later.